Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. We had these little 10-minute Bible studies that we've been doing on the Ten Commandments here for the last several weeks. And we're all, we started yesterday into the Ninth Commandment, Thou shalt not lie, or bear false witness to be accurate in what we're saying here, but it means thou shalt not lie. And we got through part of the things of who's to obey it and what's forbidden and the ways that people lie. Uh, lying, we call it the definition, was lying is defined as telling that which is false untrue, deception, misrepresentation, and exaggeration. So those are different ways that people come up. It's all lies, but there's different ways that we identify the lie. So we talked yesterday about the many ways that man can, can lie. Uh, there's three ways when he breathes out lies, he has a false report, or he deceives. And Hosea, over in Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, Hosea uh, challenged the people because if you look at these verses, this is the way they lived. This was a way of life. Uh, that was in their day-to-day -day operation, in their day-to-day -day life. They lied. They would lie to one another. And uh, I've had uh, heard of people that uh, it was said that they would even lie when the truth would do them more good. Uh, they're just so caught up in lying and never telling the truth that it, it just, they just can't do it. So over in Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, Hosea is telling the people, he says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. In other words, there's, there's fighting. There's people killing one another, shedding blood over it. So the idea, that was just the way they lived. That was that kind of society that they were caught up in at that time. And uh, we know that this is... God, those are his people he's talking to, Hosea is talking to, and so and God is repulsed by the way they're living. They're breaking those all these commandments, and when we look at that, we, the ones we've been studying, lying, killing, stealing, committing adultery, those are all part of the Ten Commandments, aren't they? Those are ones that we've already looked at, those that tie into the interaction between man and society. So there's several forms of lying now that we need to guard against. We're going to look at some different, a little different perspective here on some of these different ways to look. Slander thinking something bad about a person and sharing it, misrepresenting something about someone, tearing down a reputation and life of a person by spreading bad news about him, by slandering somebody, by speaking lies, taking what part of what you heard maybe or, or something you know is not true, but because you don't care for that person, you don't care for what they, they stand for, uh, maybe they're a part of another group, another club, or not something else, and so you want to you want to tear them down. You don't want people to think well of them, so you... you um, share things that you shouldn't. You slander the reputation. Rumor or gossip or tail-bearing. And again, now listen, it's whether this is real or imagined. So we, we show in 1 Timothy 5, 13. He says, And with all they learn to be idle, wandering from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers, also in busybody, speaking things which they ought not. Telling things, spreading rumors, telling things that you shouldn't. Repeat. Uh, again, it's whether it's real or imagined. It doesn't make any difference in Proverbs 26.20. It says, where, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tailbearer, strife ceases. And what he's talking about there, he says, you know what? Uh, some people just get a, uh, they spread rumors, uh, they slander, they, they gossip. And what happens, it, it keeps the pot stirred. It's the fire it keeps putting putting wood to the fire, if you would. So it keeps the controversy, it keeps dissension, it keeps... Uh, of infighting going on, and he says you, you stay away from that. That's what that's a result, one of the results of uh, lying. So where there's no tailberry, the, the strife ceases. And again, we see uh, suggestive hints or insinuations uh, arousing arise, arising a, a bad impression about someone, causing somebody you know this this insinuating. Well, you do you really think they would do that? You know, don't you think they could be capable of that? Uh, so you, you insinuate or you hear something and you say, well, you know, really, they, they could do that, don't you think? They're that kind of person. So you're insinuating that maybe they're, they're what they're not, but you're trying to bring a bad light on them. So that's, in fact, that's, that's lying. Over in Jeremiah 9, 4, it says, Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother, for every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will talk with slander. So we have to be careful with our neighbors. And so we need to be, you know, we need we need to kind of be that example. Uh, there, are, there are people that, that just thrive on gossip, 
I mean, boy, that t if somebody has gossip, they just want to hear it, and they want to, they want to hear the bad stuff. They want to hear what they call the, the juicy gossip. And they want to believe the worst, because that's what makes them feel good. So we need to be, as Christians, we need to be mindful of the need to, to stay away from that. You know, to uh, not necessarily defend someone, but be open and to know the whole story before anybody starts condemning or looking bad on someone. It's... And it's not popular, for sure, it's, but we should be uplifting one another rather than trying to put one another down. But again, that, that guy gossip can get going and it, it can ruin reputations. Uh, it can destroy people, destroy ministries. It can de cause divisions within a church, within families. Uh, people talk about what, what this husband did or what this wife did and whether it's true or not. Uh, some, sometimes that's why the Bible tells us over in, in 1 Thessalonians 5, we need to avoid the appearance of all evil. Uh, avoid the appearance that we're doing anything wrong or, or saying anything wrong so we don't, go, don't get caught up where somebody can talk bad about us. And uh, even though it's not true, but you'd be surprised. You know, a lie that's told long enough uh, soon becomes truth in people's hearts and their minds. And so we have to be careful that we're not caught up in that. We want to stand for the truth and let the truth be known. Okay, then we see false charges and criticism. Uh, talking about somebody's, uh, about the weaknesses and failures of a person with someone else. Um, bringing those, here's what they did or what they didn't do. And so, again, we need to stay with the truth over in, in Matthew chapter um, 5, verses 11 to 12. He says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So we want to, listen, we want to live such the kind of life that our testimony is true. So when people hear these things, and they say, well, that, that's not like them. That's not the kind of person I know them to be. And, and sometimes we have the wrong impression. But how about, I tell you, a good idea is maybe if it don't sound right, that you give the other person the benefit of the doubt. Just, just don't, don't carry that gossip, that slander, that, those words any farther. Just when you hear it, stop it there. Don't let it go any farther. You stand firm with it. And again, we see in uh, chapter uh, 5, verse 12 of Matthew, it says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they prophets verse before you. So when we get, when we're talked evil about, okay, we don't, we don't lash out, we don't go talk back about it. We, we try to put it down, we try to uh, make our testimony ring true to people. And again, it, it gets back to that that trust. You know, do people trust what you say? And if they hear you, you know, it's one of those situations, if you hear somebody talking bad about somebody else, I've heard them say, well, if, if they're talking bad about somebody else, at least they're giving you a break. They're giving you a rest. Because you get caught up in that, it's easy to do. Uh, again, it, people like to hear it, and they, they get around and they listen to the, the false teachings of the, or the false uh, words about people, the lies, you know, the slander and that. So we say they need to get away from that exaggeration and blown up flattery. And this is one of those things that can, that uh, really sometimes gets carried away. And we, it's, it's, it's what we would call the good lies. Somebody wants, might, might want to say it's the good lies. It's a, a blown up flattery, stretching the truth about a person, excessively praising someone or painting a false picture over in uh, Psalm uh, 12, uh, 3 says, The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. This is one of those things that we sometimes we want to we want to be encouraged, right? We want to encourage uh, young people uh, if they're trying to be in athletics or in music or in their studies or whatever. And so we want to encourage them. We want to build them up. And sometimes we exaggerate and we go too far with them. In fact, in uh, one of the coming, maybe tomorrow, uh, when it, we'll look at a little bit more into that, but uh, just be careful. Uh, be truthful about it. You don't, you know, if somebody did a bad job, say they, they played a bad game, you don't have to come out and say, hey, that was a lie. You played a terrible game. That was terrible. Uh, even though it's true, maybe, but you can say it in ways that's not so hurtful, not so damning. So we'll look at that a little bit more a little bit later. And other ways of making up false excuses, uh, twisting the truth, shifting blame and disavowing knowledge, telling half-truths. Uh, false excuses, but I tell you, that's one of those things that you have to be careful of, because uh, if somebody wants you to do something and and you know it's something that you should do and you can do, but you don't want to do it, and so you, uh, well, I think I have an appointment, or I think I have something else, and so you make up an excuse, so you try to get out of that, and, and that's a lie. <laughs> it, we do, we get put on the spot, and we try to come up with excuses, but Again, if we're going to be truthful to the commandment, if we're going to be truthful, uh, we just need to say, I can't do it. 
and I you don't have to elaborate or, or I don't want you don't have to say I don't want to do it I don't but you can be honest about it I can't do it and in your heart you know that hey I don't want to do that I can't do that and be honest and, and do a good job or whatever so don't make excuses don't twist the truth shifting blame disavowing knowledge telling a half truth and again you have to be careful you say I can't do it. be sure that it is something you can't do not something you just don't want to do so tomorrow we'll get into a little bit more about uh, the effects on people and how lying affects different people. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do just thank you for this day and for this time, Lord. And I just pray you'd be with us as we study this. And and uh, to tell a lie, these uh, so misrepresent the truth sometimes. Or just to make excuses is so easy to do. It, so we get caught and we don't know what to do and how to respond. And we So we need to be mindful of our, our testimony and being truthful and honest in how we deal with other people. We just thank you for loving us and we pray, Lord, that you just give us conviction when we do things and say things that aren't right, that we'd be convicted of it. And we strive to be more in tune with your scripture and be more obedient and submissive to your will. We thank and praise you for loving us and for what you've done. In Jesus' name, amen.